Vicks, makers of Vicks VapoRub and Vicks Nose Drops, presents Dangerously Yours, a half hour of romance and adventure starring Victor Jory in Windward Passage. Here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks VapoRub. And now... I am adventure. In my name, men have traversed the highways, the byways, the skyways of the world. I am the challenge of the unknown, the lure of the sea, the haunting call of the north wind. I am dangerously yours. Today, walk the decks with a man whose name was the terror of the Spanish main. A man who filled his ship with Spanish doubloons and whose scowl made brave men tremble. Henry Morgan, buccaneer of the Windward Passage. Captain Morgan. What do you want, Broken Root? What's the delay? You heard me give the order to fire. Aye, sir, I did, but yon ship is English. The crew don't like it, nor do I. We signed on to fight the Spanish. Who is in command here? You are, sir. But we're already in disrepute with Sir Thomas Modiford, the governor of Jamaica. And if we take an English ship, it's... It's piracy, sir. Then let it be piracy. And as for Modiford, I'm sick of him. He's had his share of every prize we've taken, and yet last week he hung four of my crew. Hawkins, are your guns laid? Aye, sir. Then fire! Fire! Yes, come in. Well, what's the cargo, Broken Rude? Was it worth our while? The ship was the Amaryllis, Captain. Oh. Fifty-four days out of Falmouth for Jamaica. The master's name was Davis. He'd a crew of 35 and... Stole the details, mister. I asked you what she carried. I was coming to that, sir. Her cargo was mostly cloth goods and barreled pork. <sighs> pork. But there was also 500 guineas in gold and... And what? And a lady, sir. A lady? Aye, sir. The lady Judith Lacey. Bound for Jamaica, she says, to marry Governor Thomas Modiford. Well, I'll be... <laughs> a lady to marry Modiford. Fate smiles on us, Broken Rude. Here is our revenge on the governor. Begging your pardon, sir, we... We have no actual proof that Modiford has betrayed us. No? Four of my men rotting on gibbets are proof enough for me. He damns me with his right hand while he robs me with his left. He orders me to attack the Spanish and then writes the king that he can't control me. And now we have his bride. Bring the woman in, mister. Let's have a look at her. You sent for me. I asked you if you sent for me. Can't you see I'm writing? Writing? Well, that's quite an accomplishment for a pirate. Do you also read? I've hung men who provoked me, my lady. And I have no particular objection to hanging a woman. You sound as though you might enjoy it. I wish you'd light a lantern so I could see you. You should, you know. It's very bad for your eyes, writing in this dim light. You're very considerate. Boy! Fetch me a lantern. All right, sir. Are you Lady Judith Lacey? Yes, sir. All right. I'm Captain Henry Morgan. Well, well, Captain Henry Morgan. Just fancy that. And it used to be just Henry. And let me see. Your parents, if I remember, were honest, God-fearing folk of Glamorganshire. And when you were a boy, you loved birds and flowers. What the devil are you talking about? You had a roving eye for the little girls of the Shire. One in particular. Oh, surely, Henry, you've not forgotten Judith Bray, who played with you in your father's orchard. Judith Bray. Judith Bray? Here's your lantern, sir. Give it to me. Aye, sir. Hold it close to my face, Henry. Look well. Judith Bray. Yes. You must have known we'd meet again sometime. Somewhere. No. Although a very long time ago, I used to hope we would. What did we quarrel about that night you ran away from Glamorganshire? Your bad temper, if I remember. I was only a lad at the time. You were 17, and the handsomest boy in the Shire. So this is what you've been doing these past 15 years. You married your Lady Lacey? Yes, I married. His name was Sir George Lacey. A kind and very honorable gentleman. He died two years ago. 
Why did you run away, Henry? Well, I wanted to be on the sea, and I wanted to get away from you. I was beginning to think about you too much. Some women gnaw at a man's heart, but you gnaw at his brains and his insides as well. Were you in love with me, Henry? I always wondered. I used to pray that you were. First, when you were there, because I wanted to make you happy. And later, after you were gone, because I wanted to make you unhappy. I had great hopes for you, Henry. I thought you were born to stand high in the world. I do stand high in the world. High. You can say that to me when I find you lurking in the windward passage for a helpless ship and a, a woman. You. Why, you're a cutthroat and a scoundrel. You who could be great are something to spit on. It's fortunate for you we're alone, Judith. If my men were here, I, I'd have to hang you for that speech. You can't frighten me, Henry. Why, you stupid oaf. My mother used to patch the seat of your ragged breeches out of pity for you. Go on, hang me if I anger you. It'll give you a good evening sport. Broken Rug. Aye, sir. Call all hands, Ralph, and then hang this woman to the yard arm. Hang her, sir? Yes, hang her. And, Lady Lacey, I'll send the rope and the lock of your hair to that sniveling modifit of yours. Sir Thomas? Yes. You didn't know I knew about that, did you? No, I didn't. You're not even as smart a pirate as I thought you were. But since you feel that way about Sir Thomas... Why don't you set a price on my deliverance and let him ransom me? I'm no good to you dead. Captain, the lady has an idea. Maybe this is the chance we've been waiting for. Perhaps this is the means of getting the ships and the men to sack Panama. Panama? Yes, Panama. The richest city in the New World. The pride of Spain. How say you, Captain? Ships and provisions in exchange for the lady? You'd make such a trade for a fling at Panama, wouldn't you? Yes, I'd make such a trade for a fling at Panama... But not for the mercy of this woman, nor the gratitude for England, nor love for Tom Modiford. I've had scurvy treatment from them all. But when pieces of eight and jewels lie waiting to be shoveled up, I'm the man for the spade. Is this then a reprieve? Yes, for the present. Then I owe you no thanks for my life, and I shall offer none. And now, if you don't mind, it's become very stuffy in here. I'll go back to my cabin. Good evening. Oh. You look very beautiful with your hair down. Get out of my cabin. Is it your usual habit to enter a lady's room without knocking? Yes, if the lady leaves her door unbolted. What do you want? I just thought I'd inquire how you fared. We're almost to Jamaica. We'll be in port by morning. Oh, your shoulders are even softer than I remembered, Judith. Take your hands oh, off you're me. You're angry. You're even more beautiful. Get than out of my cabin. Not without what I came for. What's that? A kiss. Would you kiss a woman against her will? Yes, and enjoy it. Why, you clumsy oaf, you murdering pirate. You may force a kiss upon me, but you won't enjoy it. You liked me to kiss you once. Yes, once I did. But you were different then. You had charm for a woman. You're a cold baggage. I hope I am. I want to be. I stuck my fingers in the fire once and got burned pretty badly. I made up my mind that would never happen again. You see, I fell in love with an ambitious man who had no time for love. That was Lacey, I suppose. No. His name was Morgan. And now, if you'll excuse me, I bid you good night. Your burns healed, I take it. Yes. But the scars are there to keep me from making the same mistake twice. Now get out of here. Because if you touch me, I'll scratch your eyes out. Very well. Good night, Judith. <laughs> Good afternoon, Governor Modiford. It's a pleasure to be in Jamaica again, and it is an honor to have you aboard my ship. Yes, my, my visit is no honor, Captain Morgan. No? I'm here in response to your note. If you harmed one head of Lady Judith's head, I not only see you hanged, I see you drawn and quartered. Not so fast, Your Excellency, not so fast. The lady has not been harmed, nor will be, if we can reach an agreement. What do you mean? What do you want? Something you should also want. You see, I plan to take Panama. Huh? And a treasure that amounts to some ten million pounds. I want twenty ships. 
Provisions for 2,000 men for three months. 5,000 barrels of powder and several thousand flintlocks. <laughs> You're mad. You're absolutely mad. No. No more, no, I, I can't consider it. It's, it's too great a risk. I see. All right, then. Lady Judith stays with me. Don't be a fool. Other terms can be arranged. I'm afraid not, Your Excellency. Well, well, well now, uh, let us examine this proposition of yours a, a bit more closely. Uh, let us hear your plan for capturing the city. Good. We'll attack by land. Here, let me show you on the map. You see, we'll start from Jamaica, head south... He's paying the ransom. He is. And you're free to go. Have you ever thought what your life is going to be like married to that man? Modiford's lumbago, Modiford's bad temper, Modiford's flabby paunch, his knock knees, his flat feet. It'll be a steady diet of pale skim milk, my dear. Pale skimmed milk. Wrong diets according to one's tastes, Captain. Now get out of here. Not this time, my dear. Oh, no, not this time. This time I'll have my kiss. I want you to go to Modiford remembering it. Get away from me. Your hands off me. Isn't it strange how deeply two people can hate one another and still be so terribly in love? In love? Yes, you can't deny it. Your lips have already given you away. Oh, Judith, stay with me. Don't leave. Stay, darling. Once I said stay, too. But you went. I'd not do it now. Let me pass, Henry. Very well. You can go to that pale, fat little pimple on the face of Jamaica. I'll take him before I'll take a pirate. Then take him. Take him and forget me, if you can. I was able to forget you once, when I was ill for the sight and the sound of you. This time I'll forget you as soon as you're gone. I've learned the knack. Have you? Good day, Captain Henry Morgan. Do send me a souvenir of Panama. Your head would be most acceptable if it could be arranged. Good day, my lady. I hope I never see you again. I hope you never do. In just a moment, we will bring you the second act of Dangerously Yours. And now, here is some good sound advice on what to do when a nasty cold makes you feel so miserable. To help relieve the coughing spasms, the muscular soreness or tightness, the congestion and irritation in upper bronchial tubes, turn to Vicks VapoRub. The moment you rub VapoRub on your throat, chest, and back, it starts to work bringing relief. And results are so very good because VapoRub penetrates, penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates, stimulates chest and back surfaces like a warming, comforting poultice. Now, this penetrating, stimulating action of vapor rub keeps on working for hours to bring you grand comfort. So be sure you get vapor rub, because only vapor rub gives you this special penetrating, stimulating action. The best known home remedy for relieving miseries of children's colds. Vicks Vapor Rub. And now, the second act of Dangerously Yours, starring Victor Jory as Henry Morgan, buccaneer of the Windward Passage. <laughs> Judith, my dear, for, for four weeks you've been in Jamaica and still you refuse to set a date for our wedding. Well, I've not been well, Thomas, and this frightful heat is most depressing. I don't know how I could have lived if you hadn't found me this delightful little house out here in the country. Hmm. Uh, has Morgan sailed for Panama yet? No, no, but he's just about ready. I'm worried about that little plan. There's talk that England and Spain may be at peace, and if, if that is true, he must not attack Panama. Oh, well, well, we shall see. I'll drive back to town now and leave you to your rest. Good night, my dear. You, you, you won't mind if, if I kiss you. Uh, my hand, Thomas. Hmm. Good night, my dear. Good night, Thomas. Well... 
you see what I meant about his kisses? Henry Morgan, have you been eavesdropping? Well, let's say I've been resting behind those bushes. Oh. My old Modifer is even duller than I suspected. I don't know how you stand. I'm not interested in your opinion. Judith, I didn't come here to match wits with you. I, I can't seem to get you out of my mind. At night, I stare through the dark and see your face. I shut my eyes, and you're still there. Through the day, it's the same. You've made me into a moonstruck schoolboy. Oh, Judith, maybe you forgot that kiss. But I can't get it out of my mind. Henry. Judith. Judith, you can't marry Modiford. You can't, I tell you. I'll kill him first. Oh, Judith, you do love me, don't you? I never stopped loving you, Henry. I tried to stop, but I couldn't. Then will you wait for me until I get back from Panama? Can I sail tonight knowing you'll wait for me? Sail tonight? Yes. If England and Spain sign a peace treaty, Modiford won't dare let me sail. So I'm leaving tonight before that happens. Will you wait, Judith? Oh, yes, Henry, of course I'll wait. Oh, you darling, you darling. Judith, I'll bring you Panama on a gold platter. I'll deck you with jewels. Just bring me yourself, Henry. That's all I ever really wanted. And good night, my dear. And goodbye. God keep you, Henry. And come back to me. Oh, come back to me, my darling. We leave the ships and start inland for Panama City. It will be a long and perilous way that we must go. But at the end of it, if we win, there are enough riches to last us all the rest of our lives. Are there any among you who are faint-hearted? No? Very well. Then prepare to leave ship within the hour. Thomas... Is there news of Morgan? Uh, nothing beyond that last dispatch that said he was fighting his way overland. Mm, I wish I'd never listened to the men. There's going to be the very devil to pay now that England and Spain are at peace. If he should fail... He'll not fail. Mr. Judith, when are you going to set a date for our wedding? Soon, Thomas. Soon, when I'm feeling better. <laughs> Captain Morgan, we can't go on. We must go on. We've had little food for days. Everyone's weak from hunger and sick from heat and insect bites. I'm going back. You've no right to keep us from going back. There are others beside myself who want to return. Then go, you cowards. The brave will keep on. You say the men were starving to death? Yes, my lady. And when Morgan began feeding us leather bags, we figured it was time to quit. Then you think that he... That they're all dead? I'm certain of it, ma'am. Those who didn't die of fever or wounds are rotting somewhere in the jungle right now. Morgan didn't have any more chance of reaching Panama than a bit of fat in a griddle. I pray you're wrong. Oh, I pray you're wrong. Captain, look down there. They've massed their armies in front of the city gates. It's your side to go down there. Maybe. Maybe not. Men, follow me. We'll take Panama by sundown. Judith, I shall no longer continue to be the butt of, of all the idle and malicious jesting in Jamaica. And I must inform you that... If you hold to your stubborn refusal to set a date for our marriage, I shall let it be known that I have decided that the marriage will not take place. Oh, Thomas. I have word that it proves beyond all shadow of a doubt that, that Morgan's dead. Panama is still in the hands of the Spanish, and I'm a prize fool. Now, are you or are you not going to name a date? You may name it if you like, Thomas. One date is no different from another. Now... 
Oh, Thomas, will you go now? Will you please go? I'm, I'm not going to try to understand these tears. I, I don't want to understand them. We'll be married one week from Sunday. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the presence of God in this company to unite this man and woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. Thomas, listen. Will you repeat after me? I, Thomas, take thee, Judith. I, Thomas, take thee, Judith. Thomas, that mob is coming here. To have and to hold. Henry! Oh, Henry! Morgan! Well, I seem to have interrupted something. Well, we will continue in a minute or two to tell us the news. News? Oh. Oh, yes, Modiford. We took Panama. You, 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 you took Panama? Oh, well, we must talk of this elsewhere. Judith, take Captain Morgan to my library. I'll join you in a moment. I, I must speak to the minister about completing our wedding ceremony a little later. Yes, Thomas. How proud I am of you. Proud? Proud that you made a fool of me? What? I ate my heart out wanting to get back to you. I brought you more gems than all the queens of Europe possess. I hope their weight sinks you down to the deepest pits of hell. I waited, Henry. They told me you were dead. You were sure I'd failed, weren't you? You thought Modiford would be a safer choice and you'd be a governor's wife. You wanted to be the governor's wife, didn't you? Henry, you're hurting my arm. I want to hurt you, you lying, cheating little fool. Henry, I loved you. I still love you. If you still want me, I'll marry you. I'll go anywhere with you. Don't you understand? I thought you were dead. It didn't matter who I married or what became of me if you were dead. I'm sorry I ever listened to you, blast you. You never wanted me. I know that now. You wanted a strong back and a weak head to do your butchery so you and Motherford could be sheathed in gold to dazzle a folk at court. Henry, you're out of your mind. Out of my mind. I'm sane for the first time since I set eyes on you. I'll show you how a man acts when he's been torn clean in two by a treacherous wind. Oh. He rams the lies. Henry! In Henry! Oh, Henry! Stop! Henry! Stop! Men, seize him! All right, Motherford. Take your rotten horror, Jade. Men, look, look that man up. Put him in the dungeon. I'll send him back to England in irons for this. Henry! Oh, Henry. Don't let him escape, Ben. Make sure of that. I won't even try to escape, Modiford. Kill me if you like. I don't particularly care now. Perhaps it's time I died. Oh, no. No, Morgan, I'm not going to kill you. I'm sending you back to the king, and I hope he tortures you well before he hangs you. Look at the marks on Judith's throat. I wish I'd killed her. Don't think England will be kind to you. You're, you're going there not only to answer for your attack on Judith, but for your lawless and unwarranted attack on the city of Panama at a time when peace existed between England and Spain. I have your papers which authorized it. They're forgeries. Do you think anyone will take your word against mine when I, I say they're forgeries? No, Morgan. You're going to answer for an attack which in the eyes of His Majesty will be looked upon as, as common piracy and will be dealt with as such. You will die for that, Henry Morgan, in disgrace and dishonor. Your Majesty, I'm your humble servant and loyal subject, Henry Morgan. Are you aware that you are charged with enough crimes to hang you three times over? Yes, sire. But I have hanged enough Spaniards to know how to act on the scaffold when my turn comes. You seem to have resigned yourself to the gibbet already. Why? I was told by the governor of Jamaica that it would be my fate. I marvel at Modiford's restraint in sending you to me, considering that you attempted to murder his bride. Tell me, is she beautiful? Beautiful, sire. Oh, yes, she's beautiful. And you love her, eh? No, no, sire, I, I do not. Ted, Ted Morgan, the truth, please. Yes, sire, I do love her. Hmm. I thought perhaps you did. Why did you attack Panama? For gold and for glory. The honor and the renown of England. To make England great in the new world and great to posterity so that her gracious king might go down in history crowned with laurel as the man who humbled Spain. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Captain Morgan, in your great zeal you have uh, perhaps gone beyond the bounds of political expedience. But your devotion to your country cannot be questioned. Nor can your leadership and courage in the face of forces far outnumbering your own 
England needs men of your caliber. We hope the peace between England and Spain will be a lasting one, which makes it imperative that the activities of all buccaneers and pirates cease forthwith. I can think of no one better able to disperse such activities than you. Do you agree? Why, sire, if I had the authority, I think I could scatter all the pirates and buccaneers to the four winds like a flock of crows. Well said. And that authority you shall have. Neil. And now arise, Sir Henry Morgan. And may the trust that I repose in you be held sacred until death. You will return to Jamaica forthwith and take up your duties as Lieutenant Governor, losing no time in dispersing these nests of freebooters. Sire, my gratitude is deep, but I humbly beg that I be sent elsewhere, for to serve under Sir Thomas Motherford would be intolerable. Sir Thomas is being recalled to act as bailiff to a very small and obscure prison. <laughs> You're a rascal, Morgan, but I like you, and I think you'll serve me well. You can depend on that, sire. Oh, Morgan, just one thing. That girl... I can't have you two running around loose. One of you would always be tracking down the other with blood in your eyes. There are really only two solutions. Execution or marriage. Now, I don't like the former because I've already knighted you and it would make me look a little silly to execute you. So I'm afraid that leaves only one alternative. Uh, you'll attend to that, Morgan? Yes, sire. You may rest assured I'll attend to that. <laughs> well... If you'd like to attend to it now, I think you'll find the lady on the other side of that door. I, uh, had a little talk with her, too. <laughs> Judith. Oh, Judith. Henry. Oh, Henry, my darling. What do you think is the best thing to do when the children catch colds? Well, you hear about all sorts of things. But it's a fact that the modern way most young mothers use to relieve miseries of their children's colds is to rub on Vicks VapoRub. And here's the reason. The moment you rub on VapoRub, it starts to work to bring grand relief. Results are so gratifying because VapoRub penetrates. Penetrates into the upper breathing passages with its special medicinal vapors. And at the same time, VapoRub stimulates. Stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting, warming poultice. Then for hours, this penetrating, stimulating action of VapoRub keeps on working to help relieve coughing spasms, muscular soreness or tightness, congestion and irritation in the upper bronchial tubes. It invites restful sleep, and often, most of the misery of the cold is gone overnight. Remember... The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of children's colds is Vicks VapoRub. I am Adventure. Next week, meet a man who matched his wits against the enemy in occupied France, the daring spy of assignment in Brittany. Until next week, then, I am dangerously yours. <laughs> Our script was written by Gene Holloway and based on the book Windward Passage by Hamilton Cochran. Dangerously Yours was directed by Richard Sandville. Lady Judith was played by Gertrude Warner. Music for the series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure and listen again next week when Vicks presents Dangerously Yours, starring Victor Jory. <laughs> <laughs>